that's one of those folk that stand for all. Oh, yeah. And they watch what God is doing. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Bless you, Lord. There's a whole lot of people in church that are watching what God is doing. And the thing that trips me out, ladies and gentlemen, is some of them might even dance and shout right alongside us because they see what God is doing. I mean, sure, if you stand back and you watch a Jordan River open up, you all got to give God some praise, aren't you? So there are people who are, now the Bible doesn't say that they were shouting, but I'm saying it to bring a point to you to the surface, is that there are people who are dancing and shouting because they've seen God do some things, and they're shouting right alongside you, but they're not willing to go all the way. about how bad things are in their life and how much they're going through all the time. But they don't understand. They look at you and they know you're going through some things. They know you're suffering. They know you're having a hard time. They know your money is still isn't looking right. But yet, you have not lost your joy. Yeah. Am I talking up yeah. in there? You haven't lost your mind. You didn't know whether you'd be able to pay the electric bill or the car note or whatever bill you had to pay. You weren't quite so sure, but you didn't lose your mind in the process. And they're wondering, wait a minute, how is it that I'm over here and I danced alongside you, I shouted alongside you, but yet I'm over here about to lose it because things in my life are going crazy, but you are at perfect peace. It's because you stood apart. Oh, and I decided that I'm going all the way. Blessing, Lord. Not everybody is willing to go all the way. Amen. Blessing, Lord. Blessing, Lord. Elisha was about to take the forefront as a leader to the people of Israel in the sense of being their prophet. And he was among the people that he had to have something to show that God was validating. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you recognize it or not, we live in a world and in a society where the people want to see something. Amen. Amen. Y'all gonna talk to me up in here? Amen. They want to see some kind of validation that you really are who you say you are. They know you go to that church up on the hill, but that doesn't matter much to them because today for most people, church has become a joke. For most people today in our society, church and church people are a joke. Because half of what we say we believe, we don't really believe. We believe it in theory. <laughs> but not in reality. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. They believe it in theory, but not in reality. I was so blessed last night when I heard the testimony that one of our young brothers in the Lord went to the nursing home and laid hands on somebody with a grove on their neck. And when they went back, the growth was gone. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you, the world is looking for people who have what they say they have. Do you really have the goods? Yeah, good. Yeah, come on. Preach it, Lord. Preach it, Lord. See? Yes, in my heart. You know why? Mm -hmm. Church is totally full tonight. Come on. Because people want the sermon packed up. Yeah. 
package in the package the way they want it. Yes. Oh, amen. They need you to excite them. They need yeah. you to hype them up. Yeah. Give you all the hoopla. Yeah. Give them all the fanfare. Yeah. Stir up their emotions. Yeah. But they walk out Ooh. feeling better. Yeah. But they're not changed. Amen. 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 When word starts coming, that puts a demand on you to change. Everybody doesn't like that. Amen. 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 Yes. They get uncomfortable. And I know I'm not hooping and hollering tonight, but sometimes people are so caught up in a hoop and a holler that they miss what God's really trying to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, Elijah was coming up. One interesting factor about Elijah was the fact that when you look at him from the time that he was, that the cloak was thrown on him, to the time of this passage right here, you really don't see much in anything of his name. No. Why are you saying that? Because when God gets ready to work in your life, he's going to do it in obscurity. Y'all not talking. When God gets ready to work on you and develop you, he's going to do it in obscurity. Everybody's not going to see what God is doing. Oh Lord, i got to talk right here. Because some of you have been getting frustrated because your family and your friends don't think you've been changing the way they think you should change. You're not moving fast enough for them. You're not who they think you ought to be. But ladies and gentlemen, you. You're not in the process for them. You're in God's hand. And God knows your time. God knows the process. God knows what he wants to do in you. And most of what he's doing, he's doing it behind the scenes before he ever reveals you as a man or woman of power. African-American man making that acknowledgement, but at the same time, not everybody's bad. Amen. I'm standing here as an African-American man making that statement too. Yeah. Let me make sure I'm good and clear. Yeah. I'm making both statements. Listen. I've been racially profiled, yeah. but at the same time, I've run into some wonderful officers of the law who have not been that way. But I understand my mother and my father taught me the concept of submission and yes. honor. Yes. Amen. Amen. Right. Bless you. Because there's a blessing in 
honor. Even the Bible says, obey them that have the rule over you. Honor them. But we don't do that today. We rather talk about people like a dog than honor. Amen. So nigga, you don't tell me what to do. You're a man like I am, a woman like I am. You go on your job and you might not talk out loud, but you talk behind their back. Come on. Preach it. Yes. Amen. And you wonder why you keep getting passed over for the promotion. No, they didn't hear what you said, but God heard. Amen. And the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that God, the heart of a king, is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it like a river. The boss didn't even have to hear you say something ugly, but because God heard you dishonor the position, God says, I'm not going to put you on their heart, because you're not ready to be qualified to step in the leadership. Amen. So... It requires development behind the scenes. Amen. Some of us have become impatient with God's development process. And one of the things we also do is we get impatient because we see God causing our brother or our sister to flourish faster than us. Yeah. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. When they start, when they start doing better in church, and maybe they start getting a little blessing financially, or things start looking up for them. You say, "Well, God, I've been in this thing thirty years. Why is it that I've been in for thirty years and I'm not as blessed as them?" And then maybe they went all in. Yeah. Maybe they didn't stand back for the time that you yeah. stood back. Maybe they went on in. Or maybe their process of development, maybe they're not supposed to stand at the level that you're supposed to stand. So maybe they're, it doesn't make them any less significant. Come on. No, that's Blessing, come on. Come on. Blessing, Lord. Just because you're an usher at the door doesn't make you any less significant than me in the pulpit. That's right. Come on. Because the usher at the door has to help maintain order in the house of God. If the usher's not at the door helping to maintain order, it might be a wildfire in here. Everybody might be going crazy, doing all kinds of stuff. That's why we need our ushers. Now, their process may not take as long as the preacher's process, but each one of us has a job, and neither of us is insignificant. Am I making sense? Amen. And how dare you act like, well, oh God, I should be further along than where I know. God knows what is going on. Maybe the reason why you're still in your process is because you need to get some more pride out of you. Amen. Amen. Help us. Okay. Yes, preach it. Bless him. Bless him. So let me move to my text. Bless him. God had to work on Elisha from behind the scenes. Get him. Where he wanted him to go. Yes. And for a period of time, Elijah, I told you last night, he poured water on the hands of the prophet Elijah. He cared for the man of God. He looked out for the man of God. He made sure that the well being of the man of God was attended to. You don't honestly think that that wasn't some work, do you? You have packed up, you've left your family, you've left your home, you've left everything that you know to follow a man of God. Come on. And you don't even realize why you're really following this man. Yeah. You just follow. Because something in you connected to that person. And now there you are, and you follow him. You go to some places that ain't cute. God will take you in your process to some places that are real uncomfortable. Come on. But it's part of your process. He will take you into some dark places, but it's part of your process. God will do some stuff that you don't want him to do. You have a job that you didn't necessarily want to take, Amen. but it was part of your process. You have, to, you have to deal with some people. Ugh, y'all not talking. Yeah. Praise the Lord. 
that are mean, uh -huh. hateful, Amen. get on your last nerve. Process. You don't have to deal with some people that do you a job. Do you dirty? Yeah. Like a low pound dog dirty. Come on. Come on. And you still have to forgive them. Amen. Because it's part of your process. I'm trying to get you to understand that even before we get to the place of our text, Elijah had to go through a but then we get here and this is the very grave part of what I have to say the beginning of it at least it says that Elijah is about to be taken to heaven if you haven't noticed there's been a changing of the guards in the kingdom all the folk that looked and seemed powerful and so on and so forth, many of them are leaving the scene. Many of them are going home to be with the Lord. Am I talking right? Amen. Surely they're passing away up here like they're passing away in other places. People who have been sergeants and generals in the body of Christ are now beginning to go home to be with the Lord. Amen. People who, and, and, and the thing is, they didn't necessarily have to have a title. Talk about They didn't necessarily have to have a title. They didn't necessarily stand behind what we call the sacred desk. Some of them sat right in the pews among you. Amen. Among us. They sat in the pews among us. And they were prayer warriors behind the scenes. You may not have known all the prayers that they prayed, but when they were at home, they would walk the floor and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. And when they would pray for something, they would see the hand of God show up and God would move. And they didn't have us, they weren't ashamed to get up at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning and pray and walk the floor. They would make decrees in the atmosphere and see God move. Amen. There were unsung generals that were in this army of the Lord that have gone on to be with the Lord. And I come to tell you that what they were trying to get us to experience and trying to get us to see was that there's something to this big God that they serve. And many of us stood and we watched the far off. We were in church, but we watched them afar off. We didn't know what Grandmama was doing in that back room when we would hear her just moaning and groaning. We didn't understand it then. But something was happening. We were being exposed to the works of the God of Grandma. We were being exposed to the work of the God of our dads and our mom. We were being exposed to them, even though we didn't really have full relationship with them yet and know them like that. But many of them have gone off the scene. And you not understand, ladies and gentlemen, let me say this also, that some of them have not physically gone off the scene, but in your life, God has caused some of them to have to back up or bring disconnections in your life. Maybe you had to move here with your new husband that God gave you, your new wife that God gave you. Maybe they're still down in another city, another state, and you can't depend on mama. Oh, I wish I had a church right there. You can't depend on mama and daddy anymore. You used to be able to go in the world and say, can I borrow? But now you can't borrow a thing. You're on your own and you gotta do it on your own. And you got to learn on your own to depend on the God that grandma and mama and daddy pray to. And so, many of them are no longer on the scene in your life. They're being taken away in some way or another because now God is posturing you and positioning you to be powerful. I told you everybody could handle being here tonight because there are some people in here that God wants to posture you and position you to be powerful. Amen. Amen. Uh, Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Ooh. Me, Lord? Yeah. You. 
Look around and tell somebody, you, 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 we start in a place called Gilgal. The Lord has the prophet Elijah in a place called Gilgal. Now you have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, each one of these places that they went had spiritual significance. They were important. It wasn't just that they were on a rock, Lord Jesus, I could talk right there. Because sometimes when God gets to working in your life and starts taking you on your journey, it would feel like you're on a wild goose chase. God, where are you taking me? What is all of this about? None of my life makes sense. Yeah. None of y'all? Yeah, man. Oh, okay, I got one with this back there. Holler yeah. back at me. That none of your life, what is this journey you got me on? You have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, there's a significance that Elisha, that Elisha would know about Gilgal. Because in Joshua chapter 5, they were getting ready to cross over the Jordan River. It was about God said, Moses, my servant, has died. I know the Lord Joshua, Moses, my servant, has died. And now I need you to take the people on to the other side. And the Bible said, he told the people, go. Oh, you need to show them what your bank account used to look like. Show them 
and removed from you. It doesn't mean you're not saved. Remember I just told you. These were children of Israel. They were Hebrew children. But there was still some stuff that had to be You might want to write this down. You may want to put it on Facebook. God will deliver you from your enemies. Yeah. Amen. He ain't going to deliver you from what you made your friends. Uh-oh. I know that sounds a little off, but just stay with me for a minute. I'm going to walk through this. He won't deliver you. I said I wish I could. Here I am. Yo, he'll deliver you from what, you, what your enemies are. Yeah. Now, some of you know things you couldn't stand, things that were in your life that really just got you. You were like, uh, uh-uh, I'm done. And when you were done for real, you were done, yeah. and it was gone. Yeah. You were, you didn't have a problem letting it go, did you? No. Be honest with me. Talk back to me. Yeah. You didn't have a problem letting those things go, did you? No. No. But what about the stuff that you love? Yeah. What about the stuff that's real comfortable to you? Yeah. Now, I don't have any room to judge anybody in here for what you have embraced. Because a lot of times in church, we don't give consideration to the reasons. Okay, watch, watch, watch. Y'all remember that woman by the well? Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. Y'all remember she had how many husbands? Five. And then the one that she was with was her husband. Now, the first thing that most church folk would say, what's up with her?
any drug addict in the room come to the altar, there may be people who in here on prescription pills that they will sit right there because they're afraid of what the church is going to do and how they're going to be judged. Amen. And it's a horrible, sad fact that it's like that in yes, this place. It's not it specifically is. here, but the church at large. Yes. But what are you saying, Mom? God is after. He's got to bring it. We're going to be great and powerful. God's going to have to cut on your flesh. Amen. And he's going to come after. I said, God will deliver you from your enemies, not your friends. The things that you embrace. So let me tell you what God will do sometimes. Can I borrow you, Nikki? Come on. <laughs> Don't anybody get any crazy ideas. <laughs> Just because I travel with her up this road, ain't nothing going on. Let me be clear about that. <laughs> Don't play this. Y'all know church folk. Well, he rides in the car with her every day. You know that it's something. Gotta be. I wonder if they date. I wonder if they marry. Or they gonna get married. I wonder if they... <laughs> There's nothing going on. Unholy or ungodly, so let me clear that up. But let me use for an example. If she is my flesh connection, the thing that I have made a friend that should not be, mm -hmm. the, the thing that needs to be cut and killed off, mm -hmm. now I told you, God will deliver you from the enemies, not your friends. Yeah. So what will happen is, brother, God, now you just shake my arm, just shake me. Keep shaking. God. Well, sometimes you stuff to agitate me. You can shake hard, I'm good. You stuff to agitate me. You stuff to get my attention. And it aggravates me so much that I shut down. Now that I shut down, she's looking at me crazy because this was my friend. This was my flesh connection. Are oh, y'all seeing the picture now? This was my flesh connection. I shut down, so now it has aggravated her. But I don't understand why she's acting funny now. Because all I know is I'm just trying to cope with this over here. Are y'all with me? Yeah. So now she's angry. She's treating me funny. And so I get upset. Now I start to dislike what we have. Are y'all catching where I'm going now? Thank you. Now, I dislike what we had, and now it, what we had has become an enemy to me. And God was trying to make it an enemy. God, the devil didn't send him. God sent the agitation to get my spirit in a place where I didn't want to deal with this anymore. And finally, it became an enemy. So God just stepped in and say, I'm going to deliver you from this thing right here. Thank you very much.
And Lord, don't let it be a good old CSI episode of Law and Order. Oh my goodness, we will sit and we'll watch, we will binge watch stuff. Don't play with me because you get caught, because you, maybe you've been so busy, you have so much stuff going on, so now you got to catch up on what you missed, so you DVR all the episodes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I hope this is getting good this whole time. Yeah. Amen. But now here you are. You dig your heart every day and you will literally sit there and only get up to go to the bathroom. You barely even take care of the kids that day. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I got y'all some sandwiches in the refrigerator. There's some juice in there. Y'all sit down and be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> But let someone say, come to prayer for an hour. I go to churches sometimes. And for me, before service, I don't, I don't like y'all talking before service. It, it messes up the atmosphere. I believe if you're coming into the house of God, you should come in prayer for me. You should be praying for me. When you're coming in here, you should be praying for this people. Pray for the worship team. Lord, please touch them, anoint them. Have your way upon them tonight, God. Let them speak and deliver what you have to say to me. Let my heart be ready. And, and then you pray for your whole, if you really have the right mind, you start praying for your whole role. You make it up and start anointing your role, even if nobody's on it. You start praying for your role and anointing your role. Because you say, God, I want whoever sits in this chair tonight, I want you to touch them, God, in whatever way they need to be touched. Whoever sits in this chair, God, anoint. You, you see what I'm saying? But when we come to church, we don't come in with the right mindset. We come in talking. Yes. You can call them on the telephone and talk to them at the church. Amen. Or you can schedule them to go to lunch with them someday and talk. Yeah. That's right. Or talk to them after you get out the door. But the atmosphere of the sanctuary ought to be kept sacred. But now he was prepared to close, ladies and gentlemen. That's the first thing. When it comes time to pray, I've been in churches where I'll get up before services and nobody else is praying. I'll grab the mic and just start praying. Yeah. And I'll start pushing. And folks are looking at me like I'm crazy. What is he doing? Uh, praying. But, and I understand that some people, it's not their culture that have to be brought into that. But here's my point. If I pray any more than 10 minutes, they may join them before a few moments, but after about two minutes, they sit down. Okay, I'm done. I can't hear you all. And they don't, they don't do anything else. They just sit there. They don't keep praying. They start flipping through the person, playing on their phones, whatever. 